Um, you know, her full story, but she's a researcher in health policy at the uh, tropical, I suppose, tropical medicine, is that right? London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, that's right. right. And we, did you work in the city before, I understand? Yeah, once upon a time I was a, a privatisation person myself, a technician. So you've sort of seen both sides of the... Yeah, I yeah. was talked out of it by some friends from the third world and couldn't continue with that, so then I started to fight it and then study it. Right. So, uh, yes, that's my so, background. So Lucy's been uh, in great detail about the effects of privatisation on the NHS and she'll speak to the effect of TTIP on this process. Thank you. I have. Okay, thank you. Can you? Is it working? Well, okay. okay, fine. Um, I like the song presentation promoting TTIP very much because it lends itself to um, unevident sound bites. You might have noticed that the trade lobby talks really a lot of rubbish most of the time. Their statements, as soon as you start to scrape the surface a little bit, are clearly nonsense. Um, I would like to, uh, the point of what I want to say is about the framing of, of how we see this problem. Um, it's absolutely outrageous what they're intending to do with ISDS. Um, but it's a mistake to think that the corporations believe that they're entitled to protect their future as yet unearned profits. They don't believe it, they think they might be able to get away with it. In fact, their chances, they're trying this on. So it's all framed as, as laws and dry regulations and you know compromises between countries and etc. But what this actually is, is a heist um, by the banking class, really, against the rest of us. So I want to talk about this really in terms of, of it being a, a corrupt endeavour rather than anything else. And I want to talk a little bit about the background to the NHS privatisation. Um, which comes down to really they've bought our politicians. Also, um, I would like to take up a point earlier um, about the deregulation. Trade law and competition law and US antitrust law work like uh, one of those Russian dolls, a matryoshka doll with, with the different layers. So they have this, much the same provisions at different layers which are self-reinforcing. So it makes it harder to fight and harder to understand and it's very confusing. Um, but they also bring these regulations in, not at just at global level and at regional level, but also at national level. And at the moment, the deregulation bill is going through Parliament. Um, that is a very odd document with pages and pages of trivia. And uh, then suddenly a thing saying that any regulation or law which hits economic growth can be challenged and removed doesn't specify anything about the public interest, doesn't specify any method of appeal, doesn't specify who it is that's going to bring these cases, but we all know who that is really, because hits economic growth means case by case, hits profits. So any law or regulation in the UK is by then up for grabs. And that bill is sponsored by Oliver Letwin, who, as you may know, wrote a book called Privatising the World when he was a privatisation director at Rothschild's Bank. And he uh, was originally responsible for designing the NHS changes we're seeing right now, and he is su supervising them on a continuing basis. So he's in charge of the NHS uh, privatisation. I therefore think the deregulation bill is going to be used to um, remove the level of medical qualifications in particular for some sorts of work. That also is being brought up by other parties in the NHS. Um, so that's a worry, but clearly it's got wider ramifications. Any area of your concern, that deregulation bill may be relevant to you. So have a look at it about the economic growth section. Where is it? It's uh, coming in up into committee stage, I believe, at the moment. It's on the, it's on the Parliament website with all the other laws in process. So where is the deregulation bill? You can find it on the Parliament website. Well, what was the section, I think? 83. It, yeah, it's 83 now, okay, yes, it's gone up, thank you. I've got 83. Right, there's a load of things about photography and fishing rights, but don't be confused by that, just keep ploughing through for the economic growth part. Um, a couple of days ago, I ran into a Spanish doctor, and we were talking about the fact that we lost our NHSs on the same day, 1st of April 2013, and she was surprised because they've been told in Spain that it's just them. People don't understand that this is a wave of privatisation sweeping Europe, um, which really is at the behest of the trade lobby. 
Linda can testify to that because she was present at meetings uh, where the harmonisation coming up to TTIP was discussed and the priority sector was health. So actually the target is health services across Europe. And the target for TTIP for this country, no matter how many times the government denies it or anybody else concerned denies it, for example the TTIP promoting Labour Party denies it, um, the truth is that this is the only sizeable prize left in the UK. The target for the EU is public services and the target for um, the US is small and medium state procurement. So state level procurement is, is being given up so that there's something for the EU to say that it's winning. But honestly what it is is they're making a raid on our public services budgets. So I will just skip through... Uh, this. Our previous largest privatisation in this country was 40 billion spread over 25 years. We spend one and a half times that on the, or almost three times, sorry, almost three times that each year on the NHS. So that's up for grabs, it's about 110 billion now. And they're also proposing to get rid of our hospitals and sell off the sites. So they'll be privatising about a third of the hospitals according to the quit plan in 2009 and um, they will be liquidating the rest for redevelopment, housing, retail, that kind of thing. They just want to sell off the sites. Under a care in the community narrative you might note the same one that Thatcher used to sell off the mental hospitals and provide no care whatsoever for the people who'd been in them. Right, um, I, I guess these slides will be circulated. This explains what has happened to our hospitals. They've been split out from the state um, using foundation trusts. Uh, the foundation trust model which was already originally designed in Spain for privatising the Spanish NHS. They got a similar NHS to ours in 1975. Seems to be what you get on the way out of a war. So that was done in 2003 and uh, 2009 Health Act created a way to make hospitals go insolvent, which is nonsense because insolvency is a protection from creditors from limited companies. So to how to have an NHS hospital go bust, it's not meaningful, but it's a useful narrative. It's basically a piece of spin and they created a way for McKinsey to privatise everything. PFIs were put into the foundation trusts to make it impossible for them to break even to feed into the insolvency narrative um, and now we are seeing the squeeze on hospital budgets so that those PFI bills finally become completely insupportable and the um, Special Administration for Privatisation is out there now, going through our hospitals as fast as it can. Hospitals are going to be merged into, into trusts which have got PFIs so as to take the whole hospital estate down. The PFI contracts are decades long and the charges largely have to be paid whether or not a hospital is operated on that site. So everything is set up so that the authorities will be forced to get rid of all of the other facilities in order to save the PFIs because they have to pay for those anyway. Um, we're looking also at an insurance company takeover. Not only are they trying to build the private insurance market by destroying the NHS, but what remains of the NHS budget, uh, NHS will have its budget funnelled entirely, um, probably through a single insurance company. When the effort bill goes through removing the competition restrictions, the competition restrictions restrict state monopolies, i.e. continuing to run public services properly, but they also restrict private monopolies. So should there be a company which is pre-positioned to be able to take over uh, large parts of the NHS all at once as a monopoly provider, that company will be able to do so. And what do you know, an insurance industry vice president is now at head, the head of the NHS. Why has that gone down? Okay, no worries. Uh, it means I've lost those graphs again, doesn't it?